Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I've decided to take some of my own advice and we are going out in search for some new trails to ride. We are going to explore a local riding area that I've been wanting to visit for a while now. It's known for a wide range of cross country and woodland riding as well as having a number of locally built trails and jump lines. In the car, Woodbury Common is about 7 miles away, which is around a quarter of an hour's drive. But at the moment, we're not allowed to drive due to the coronavirus restrictions, so I'm going to have to ride there, which means taking some quieter roads and a longer route. So let's go! But wait, at this point you may be asking yourself, what the hell is he riding? Well, there's only one problem with my plan. My bike is still out of action waiting for a new part to arrive. So, with my mountain bike not an option, I'd like to introduce you to another bike in my fleet the 2016 Giant Defy 3 road bike. It's an 18 speed aluminium frame giant road bike with a composite fork and in total weighs less than 10 kilograms. It should be our fastest way to get to the trails. It's time to set off, so I changed out of my normal riding kit into something more, well, road bike specific. So let's go. With my alternate route, this journey is about 10 miles of mostly uphill pedalling, so it should take me the best part of an hour to ride, give or take a little time for me to get lost. Before setting off, I had a look at a map to find a couple of the areas of the common that I wanted to explore. With the map and my route committed to memory, I was on my way. As you know, riding a road bike is very different to riding a mountain bike. Because it's so lightweight and responsive, it changes direction with a simple body movement. A road bike is all about speed. The ride position, bike geometry and components are all designed to be lightweight and minimal resistance. Mountain biking is more about building something reliable and resilient, a trade-off between being responsive and grippy. However, there are plenty of transferable skills that you can take from riding a mountain bike to use on a road bike, and combining the two can make you a better and fitter rider. I was definitely able to go faster on my Giant than on my mountain bike, although the saddle still takes a bit of getting used to on long journeys. But after an hour of rear-end torture, I made it and was excited to get exploring. As I arrived, it was easy to see why this place is so popular with mountain bikers. There are miles and miles of wooded and cross-country trails all over the place. There are an endless amount of routes to get lost on, featuring some interesting and challenging terrain. My plan today was to walk these trails to get an idea of where I can ride once my bike is back in action. But now that I'm here, I can't help but to have a little ride on a couple of the easier paths. It quickly became clear that my road bike was not the most suitable tool for the job. So with that out of my system, I reverted back to my original plan of exploring some of the locally built single track on foot. Okay, so I've just locked my bike up, up by the castle. I'm gonna do the rest on foot. That way I can really, really explore the woodland and find exactly what I'm looking for. Let's go. The first place I headed for was towards the east. I'd found a thread on a mountain bike forum that pointed me in the right direction. Thanks to my brief session looking at a map, it wasn't long before I was on the right track. So I've started to go a bit Bear grills now. Um, I'm starting to see the telltale signs of bikes, so tire tracks, um, berms and things, so I really can't be far off. I followed my wilderness instincts and managed to find the first piece of single track. As it turns out, this trail is a nice introduction to the valley. It's on a gentle gradient and the trail flows nicely downhill with a couple of small berms, roots and flat corners to keep things interesting. Through my searching I was thrilled to have found this trail, however I could hardly contain my excitement when I found out what this trail led me to. Amazingly, at the top of the hill I was presented with multiple marked lines of crafted single track. I love finding new trails to ride and these look great. They use the terrain well. Starting off steep, they twist and jump their way down the hillside ending in a flatter area that winds its way between the trees. Containing a good amount of natural and man-made features, I recommend that you have your bike in check before attempting these.
From investigating these trails, it's clear that they won't suit everyone. The valley is steep and the features are serious. There are no alternate lines to take to bypass obstacles, so you need your riding to be up to scratch. After my earlier excitement of riding on the trails on my road bike, I thought it best not to try the same thing here. But this is somewhere I'm definitely going to bookmark and come back and ride. So even though I couldn't ride, I was stoked to have found these trails. However, this wasn't the only place I wanted to check out today. A short trek from where I discovered the trails, I found myself walking around the edge of a dugout section. And I found something amazing. Two lines of crafted jumps, a small tabletop line and a bigger jump line full of doubles. A full on bike park in the woods. The smaller tabletop line is great for learning to hit jumps. These range from a distance of around 4 foot to what looks like around 8 foot in length. The larger doubles line is of course for the more serious freestyle rider. There are some steep lips and big gaps on these jumps. Investigating here, there's also a steep wooden drop that no doubt looks flat on camera, but trust me when I say it's not for the faint-hearted. At this point, I was starting to resent that I turned up to these amazing locations with completely the wrong bike, and as soon as this coronavirus lockdown is lifted, I plan to revisit this place again in the near future. If you're wondering how I was able to find these hidden places to ride, well, check out my video on finding trails. It will tell you a bit about my process for searching out new places to ride. I hope you enjoyed today's video and it inspires you to go check out some local places for you to ride. Thanks for watching, I'll see you next time.